Mike Porter. Um, this morning I was 182. Uh, I just did a show here a week and a half ago. It was in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, it was my first pro win, first, first NGA pro win, which was really, really cool for me. Um, there was nine pros in the lineup, and I finally broke through that. I took second, I think, three or four times, and finally broke in and, uh, and won, the, won the class. Uh, I'm three weeks out from uh, Philadelphia, the NGA Philadelphia show, which I will be competing in that. And then a week after that, I'll be at the NGA um, Peoria. So I've got two more shows coming up. And uh, hopefully it goes just as well as uh, as the first one did. But uh, either way, I've definitely brought my best package, so it's been a, a pretty exciting year for me. Um, okay, and what, what's your height? I'm 5'10", or just under 5'11". You know, 5'10", 5'11", right in there. I've been working with Cliff Wilson, and uh, it's been a, a phenomenal uh, year for me. I've learned a ton from him. He's taught me a lot of new dieting practices that have really helped, really got me a lot sharper, a lot leaner, and I've held on to a lot more mass. Um, it's consuming quite a bit of, it's a macros diet, so we, we basically play with it every week. I send him my weight and pictures, and he adjusts things as we go. And uh, especially like for shows, it's really nice to, uh, to work with him. I check in with him you know, five or six times in between uh, a couple days before and the, the morning of the show so you can adjust or play with my sodium potassium levels to make sure that my body's coming in at the peak top uh, condition. We did a backload uh, diet for my first show, which uh, was a ton of carbs the day before and lots of water. And we're gonna try something a little bit slower on the next show just to see which one works the best. And then whichever one does work the best, obviously we'll use that for my third show coming up in, uh, in Peoria, so. Uh, go ahead and um Tell us what you trained today and the movements and what you like about each movement. Well, we started, well, we did chest, shoulders, and triceps. And uh, it started, today was a high, high rep movement day, so it wasn't a lot of real heavy weights. It's uh, really concentrating on, uh, on form as well as full uh, flexing the muscles completely. Uh, recruiting all the muscle fibers is definitely really important. Um, so I started with uh, five sets of five reps on some dumbbells. Uh, we started with 110-pound uh, dumbbells, and I did get five sets of five reps. The last couple sets were really pushing it hard, which is, which is good. You want to train just about to failure or fail on the last couple sets. Uh, after that, we moved into incline dumbbell press, where I started with, uh, right, I used 80-pound dumbbells, and the, the rep range goal was four sets of 10 through 15 reps, and I did uh, 15, 12, 12, 11. So I definitely hit failure, but uh, definitely got a good squeeze and, and fatigued that muscle. After that, we moved into a machine shoulder press or machine uh, chest press. And uh, I think I did uh, 13 reps on the first one, had to drop the weight a little bit. And then I jumped up to 15, 15, and maybe 14 or something like that. Uh, next, we moved into crossovers for chest. And again, this is high rep, lightweight. So the goal, the rep range is 15 through 30 reps. So what I did is uh, I ended up getting 18, 18, 16, 16. And again, just making sure your form is, is really good and flexing the muscle completely just to completely fatigue it. And that was the end of my chest. After that, we moved into shoulder movements. And we did a, uh, a dumbbell shoulder press, overhead press. And since you kind of pre-fatigue the shoulders, while you're doing chest, you definitely cannot do as much weight as you typically would do. So I used 60 pound dumbbells, which typically would be really, really easy, and it's not. So I did two sets, the rep range is 10 through 15 reps, and I think I did uh, 13 reps and 10 reps. So it was right in that rep range I wanted to be, and it, it definitely fatigued up pretty quick. Uh, after that, we moved into lateral, uh, shoulder laterals. And again, this is a, a lightweight, I did uh, 20 pounds, which is, I know, massive weight for all those big lifters out there. Um, I did uh, 25, 21, and 19 for my rep range, but you'll be able to see it really, uh, you see a lot of the striations just building up and the, the muscle just gets completely fatigued and I really struggle at the end of those uh, couple sets. Uh, after that, we did um, some rear delts flies just to completely fatigue the rest of the shoulders. Uh, so I did, uh, the rep range on that is 15 through 30 reps again, and uh, I did a uh, little too heavy of a weight the first time. I got 16 reps, so I dropped the weight, 
and went a little bit lighter just to make sure I really worked the muscle well. And I think I did 22 on the final, uh, final rep on that. Once I completed that, we moved into triceps. And again, this is um, low weight, high rep again. So it was two sets of 15. And I think I did complete uh, 15 reps on both of them. They were both you know, pretty difficult to finish that. But I did finish, I think it was 120 pounds on the, uh, oh, just an extension, just a push down, a straight bar cable push down movement. Uh, once I was done with that, we did dumbbell kickbacks. And again, this is a super light exercise. You want to really work on form, so throw that weight right out the window. You want to make sure you really fatigue that muscle completely. And the rep range on this one, again, is uh, 15 through 30 reps. So I think I started off with, again, a massive 15 pounds, and I only got, I think, 17 or 18, 15 reps. So then I dropped it down to 12 pounds, and uh, I think I got 21 or 22 or something like that. But it just really, really fatigues. Uh, the muscle completely and that completed the workout and then we moved into some different posing which will come up in the video as well so mike with uh you uh, working with your new trainer uh cliff and everything how's your energy been and what is your diet like with how it's going now um energy it, it depends on the day it's weird how the body will just kind of adjust uh you'll get your days i, I carb up once a week and uh you'll get your days where you're just you know, you're down in show shape. You're just not feeling well. You're tired. You're exhausted. You don't sleep well. Uh, and then the next day you feel okay. And then the next day you're kind of tired and then you feel great. Uh, and then you, some days you carb up. You would think on a carb up day you'd feel great. And sometimes it takes a day or two to get to that point where you actually feel, you feel well. Um, but it's been, uh, it's been a really good learning process just to kind of see how the body reacts to different, uh, different carbs, different proteins, different fats. So it's been a, a really cool process to work with Cliff and, uh, and to play with that. Okay, so what's a typical like day for you, bud? A typical day, uh, I, I typically will eat, well I always do eat, six meals a day. So what I try to do is I get up and I'll have my first meal sometime between 6.30 and 7 o'clock in the morning. And I've got certain, uh, again that's a macros diet, so I have certain numbers that I try and hit for each meal. And it does change slightly, but, uh, but basically I'll have eggs in the morning. Usually it's like 10 egg whites. Uh, I try to get my fats from either olive oil, MCT oil, um, kind of a little bit cleaner fat. And then I'll have like oatmeal. And then uh, typically three hours. I try to get uh, three hours in between each meal, somewhere around there. So typically around like 10 o'clock I'll have, I do eat a lot of venison. That's been a lot of my protein. But it could be fish, could be chicken. There's a lot of different, uh, anything lean is what I like. But uh, I eat a lot of green beans, spaghetti squash. Um, and then again, around 1 o'clock, I'll, I'll eat again. And typically, it'll be spaghetti squash, green beans, and then some sort of protein. Uh, and then typically, I will, uh, you know, work out around 4.30, 5 o'clock. And uh, I'll have my pre-workout. And then as soon as I'm done working out, I'll do a protein shake. Uh, and then I try to, within an hour and a half, have my meal, uh, my post-workout meal, which again is going to be some carbs, some protein, and some fats. Uh, after that, I have um, a meal right before I go to bed, which is really nice because I don't go to bed hungry. So again, that's usually one of my biggest meals, or it is one of my biggest meals. I have, uh, typically I'll eat oatmeal just because I really like oatmeal. Uh, eggs again, so I'm typically eating anywhere from 18 to 22 eggs every day, mostly egg whites, depending on uh, where my protein levels are. And the nice part about this diet is the goal is you just need to make sure you hit your macros by the end of the day. So if I'm a little bit low on my fats, I can make that up with olive oil or MCT oil, or I could have a whole egg. Uh, and the same thing with the carbs. And uh, and yeah, so it's a you're not starving is what is really nice. So it's been a, it's been a really cool diet process. I've learned a lot. Um, so yeah, I've enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I would definitely uh, stick with the macros diet. I, I like it better than any diet I've ever done in the past. It seems to be easier. It's much more flexible. So I'd say it's more of a lifestyle. So when I get off the diet, it'll be much easier to transition back into normal food, uh, which that has been sometimes difficult for me in the past where you just want to go crazy. You know, your brain shuts off the receptors that your, your stomach is full. So you basically can just eat and eat and eat. So 
it's it'll be a lot easier because I've been able to have some of those sweets. You know, if I if I want a rice pudding, I can have a rice pudding as long as it fits within my macros. Or if I want a little bit of sugar, I can have that. Or if I want to have some coffee creamer, I can have that as well. So there are definitely a lot more leniencies in this diet, which which makes it a lot easier. Well, first of all, yeah, I'd like to thank Rich Farring, and we're at uh, Grayling Fitness Center. Um, great gym. Came up here, did a good workout. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Jeff Saigo for coming up here and uh, and shooting with me. We try to do this a couple times uh, every well, whenever I diet down for a show. Uh, and then also Cliff Wilson for uh, the training advice, uh, the nutrition, and then also my wife for putting up with me because I know it's been, you do get ornery on the diet and I got to make sure I just uh, try and take a breath and relax and, and not get mad at her for things that just don't matter. So uh, that is another thing on the diet. You have to really make a conscious effort to not be short with people because that is one thing you, you just you just don't sleep well. You get ornery sometimes, so you just got to take a breath and, and just say it's it's not worth it. Don't sweat the small stuff. So, um, yeah. Good deal. Okay, well, uh, good luck at the show, bud. And uh, you got two more, and hopefully you win those too. So. That's right, two more. Okay, if someone wants to contact you, what's the best way? Do you have a Facebook, bud, or what's the best way to get a hold of you? or supplement companies? Yeah, I would say uh, Facebook is definitely a great way to get a hold of me. Um, it's Mike Porter NGA Pro is my Facebook name. Um, or they could even email me at PorterMW1013 at Hotmail.com. Um, not sponsored currently, but I would definitely be open to that. That would be something that would be really cool for me. That might be the next step for me. So I'm open to any suggestions.